Thanks for watching Alpha News. I'm Liz Collin. And today we welcome Kendall Qualls and his wife Sheila to the program. Thank you guys both for being here. So glad to be here. Thanks Thank for you. Having us. I know we have quite a few topics to, to tackle in our time together, but I wanted to ask first uh, to you, Kendall, how are you feeling after your run for governor? I know it was a contentious battle, especially what we saw play out in, in Rochester, but how are you now? Well, you know what? Obviously disappointed by the outcome, but uh, more than ever, we need to make sure that Republicans win in November. So I'm all, all behind that. And what is what is your take? How do you feel? I'll ask uh, Sheila the, the question as well, but how do you feel about the Republicans uh, and their chances this November? We have a great chance. Um, if anything, what we have is that the public has got a sense for how the Democrats have um, governed. And we've seen the results, obviously, with the crime at record levels. We're having uh, record prices and, and gas prices. And uh, this is um, not where most Americans want to be. And so I believe that the Republicans have an answer for all those issues. And uh, we're in a good position to uh, have a major wave this coming November. And Sheila, what are your thoughts there? Um, I think I agree with Kendall. Um, if, if there is ever a year that we were going to win, it is this year. And we do have all the answers to um, the crime and the, you know, the school problems. Um, and I just think um, we have a really good shot, and I'm, I'm excited about November. I know you are the executive director of Take Charge Minnesota. You are back in the role as president, Kendall. But just talk overall about your organization, its mission. I know you guys uh, kind of just started this thing uh, about a year ago and have come a long way in that amount of time. Yeah, it has been a really exciting year. Um, you know, we focus on restoring the two-parent black family. And, you know, because... Restoring the two-parent black family really affects all of society. What's going on, what's been happening in the black community for the last 50 years is now starting to spread out into broader, you know, America. And so that's one of the things that we do. We refocus on restoring the two-parent black family. And we've also been asked to speak a lot about critical race theory. People, um, a lot of people just don't know what it is. They're angry about it, but they're not sure what they're angry about. So we do a lot of speaking on just explaining people, what, you know, to people what it is um, and why it will never, ever work, um, ever, because of, the, because of the issues in the black community. And you are available to, to speak locally, statewide. You guys are putting on a lot of miles to get this message out there. Ken. Well, absolutely. Uh, Metro, as well as statewide, we have a um, request for actually to speak um, just north of Brainerd here uh, in August. Um, but, you know, on a broader scale, our message and mission at Take Charge Yes, it's uh, restoring two-parent families, but also is this idea, the promise of America works for everyone, regardless of race, regardless of station in life. And there's a formula for that to happen. And we help people make sure that they understand that there is a formula, there is a pathway, and that we need to get back to the basics of how we get there. And um, th that's our message. It resonates across racial lines, gender lines, and, uh, and, and actually political lines. And I know you're also adding movie producers to your to your long uh, resume, but you have backed this documentary called I Am a Victor, and we're going to go ahead and give our viewers a chance to watch. On April 4th, 1968, tragedy struck our nation. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. One large group of the black community took the path that led to an Afrocentric secular and political activist journey. The other took the path rooted in the values and principles of their parents and grandparents, a life of strong moral character, and to treat others with love and respect. No one owes you anything. Go out and work for what you want. We are not victims. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So, you know, th think about this. One of the things that we try to communicate broadly across the, the, the public, again, regardless of racial background, is that the, uh, what's happened in the black community started over 50 years ago. And I tell people that if you look at the culture, we're the canary in the coal mine because this is spreading, like Sheila mentioned, beyond the black community. And so what, what this uh, documentary does, it tells the story of what happened in the black community after the death of Martin Luther King to present day. And that there are actually two pathways taken in the black community. One was, uh, I would call it a, a secular, political, Afrocentric um, journey. Think about Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton. 
And there was another road taken in the black community that we rarely ever hear about. And these are people that stuck to the principles of their parents, their grandparents, focused on faith, family, and you know, getting a better education for their kids, working hard. And what they have seen, what we have seen, is that the outcomes over 50 years of these two different pathways. And so in the documentary are gonna be people from the Twin Cities that talk about being on both, both journeys. And even some people that said, you know what, they were started out on this, this political activist pathway, switched over midstream, and had different outcomes in their lives. Everyone in this documentary comes from a hard background. And just to see these people who have come from these lives of poverty or drug abuse or uh, you know physical abuse, just to see how they have turned their lives around and, and have a victim, a victor mentality as opposed to a victim. When can we expect to watch? Well, we're targeting the end of July. Uh, in fact, we have a film festival debut July 14th in Las Vegas. It, it got picked up at a film festival. And um, I guess we, we can announce here first that uh, Salem Now has picked up the documentary. It will be on their platform with uh, other um, you know, like-minded type of um, uh, documentaries like 2000 Meals, um, Whose Children Are They? Same platform as those. Wonderful. So the countdown is on. Yes. For, for us all to watch. We're very excited to uh, also say that Sheila's work is going to be featured here on Alpha News. And I know your, your column uh, really did so well that you put out just recently. It's called, It's a Great Day to be Black in America. And you went on to write, we live in the least racist time in our country's history, but are more racially divided than ever before. You talked about your dad, how he would have loved to grow up in the country we do today. The piece was sort of a, a sarcastic, you know, um, people were talking, always talking about how systemically racist we are and how terrible it is for black people. You know, I just pointed out some things that are, you know, quite obvious that it's not terrible for black people um, in terms of, you know, SAT scores. My kids can get into college with a lesser SAT score than their white counterparts. And that a lot of white kids lie on their college applications claiming a minority status so that they can have um, um, benefits that are available only to minorities. So I think that it's just, to me, it's, it's, I think it's almost funny when, you know, all the complaints that we hear and how systemically racist we are, when you really look at the facts and look at what's really going on, it's a very different picture. You said simply that you think black people are being duped and in many cases, it's white people perpetuating it. Yeah, um, you know, so many, I think the black community has been conditioned to, um, to be victims. You know, we're constantly fed that message, and um, I think people get tunnel vision, and they don't even look and understand and realize that there's another picture out there. And that's what I wanted to point out to people, black people and white people, that there's another story out there, and it's a story that we don't ever, ever hear, and it's one that we need to hear more of, and that's what we do at Take Charge. We try to tell people the other side of that story. And we're excited to showcase a, a bit more of that story as well here on Alpha News. Another exciting announcement uh, that you guys are going to be starting a podcast uh, here on the platform. It's called Fully Charged, Restoring American Values. But what can we expect, Kendall? Yeah, sure. You, you, know, I, you know, I shared this message on the campaign trail that, you know, that the odds are that a guy like me that um, <clears throat> lived part of his childhood in Harlem, New York, a trailer park in Oklahoma, wouldn't graduate from high school, serve in the military, be married for 36 years, have five children, um, retire from his corporate uh, professional life as a global vice president of a major corporation. It happened to me, it can happen to anyone. And I share with people that it's not me, I'm not exceptional. We live in an exceptional country, I serve an exceptional God, and that if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And in fact, it does all the time, but we rarely hear about it. And because there is a conscious effort to, to push a narrative that's counter to the American dream and to what's really happening across our country. And you guys are gonna, gonna tackle that, bring in, bring in guests and, and talk about some of these tough subjects. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because there are so many more stories like Kendall's, like mine. Um, I tell people when I speak, I'm not an anomaly. We're not, a, you know, we're not strange, we're not outliers. There are so many more people like us, but you know, the progressives don't want people to hear that message. They want people to think that we are systemically racist, that racism is alive and well today. And we're not saying that there aren't racist in the country because there are racist people, but we are not a systemically racist society. I know that we have a graphic that outlines the framework of the show. Um, 
that that kind of talks about some of these some of these topics that you, that you're going to get at. Sure. So what what we want to do is something different. We don't want to just take you know a current event and and mince meat it like you know, like every most talk show. We don't want to replicate that. We want, we want to give people an idea that there is a conscious effort that's really under under attack against the foundations of our country. And if you think if you look at the different parameters we're looking at, be it school education, basic education for K through 12, and even some, you know, uh, at higher levels. Um, the whole idea of our Judeo-Christian traditions um, that the country was founded on. Um, when, when we look at just the whole work ethic and all these different fr uh, frameworks, we're gonna put, filter it through the, the, those different lenses and give people an idea how we're under, under stress uh, from this uh, different perspective of our country. So, for example, I, I tell people we're going to either have one or two things in our country. The country that we remember growing up with or this new country that the progressives are pushing where everyone has a pronoun and um, either one or two are going to prevail because they both can't coexist. A country that seems to be unrecognizable to, to many of us even, even currently. Exactly. And I know uh, education is something that's near and dear to your heart. Uh, you deserve a, a medal for homeschooling all your children. <laughs> My goodness. Um, but that is also something that, that isn't talked about that much in Minnesota, frankly, because many teachers are uh, afraid. And you're going you're gonna to be, be bringing some of those discussions to light. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of teachers out there who are, you know, they are afraid. They're afraid to speak up. You know, we, we meet them when we go and speak, and they come up to us and tell us, you know, the circumstances under which they work, and they're difficult but they're not willing to speak out. And I think when we are afraid to start speaking out in America, saying what we believe, I think it's, you know, something's wrong. So if I can just add to that, we'll be having um, some of those teachers on the set, even if um, sometimes we might have to silhouette um, their appearances just to protect their identity. But we're coming out with a video soon of two public school teachers that recently resigned that will basically share the story of of what's going on in the schools that the administrators don't want parents to know. Um, I think more than anything, we need transparency and we need truth in our country that's being shielded from us. Um, and whenever you have to do that, that tells you that there's an agenda that, um, that's going on that uh, wouldn't necessarily pass muster with most parents. Well, we're thrilled you're bringing that truth here to Alpha News. So thank you both, Kendall and Sheila Qualls. We really appreciate you being here. Thanks. Thank you for having us. And can't wait for the podcast. You guys have just a, a few projects in the works. Yes. So we'll be here tracking all of it. Right. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Liz Collin. We'll be back again soon. Mm -hmm.